Hello and welcome real estate professionals. Thank you for joining our monthly Agent Advantage webinar series. My name is Kurt Klaus and these webinars are brought to you by the Guaranteed Rate family of companies and our Agent Advantage website. Today's webinar topic, understanding the buy down strategy for both your buyers and your sellers been a kind of a hot button topic lately. Lots of questions on this come in as today's market turns and rates tick a little higher. We are seeing a, a comeback of buy downs or with loan options in which the seller reduces the buyer's interest rate for the first couple years of the loan. So today this webinar will cover high, high level of how you can leverage buy down strategies to try and create a win-win situation for both your buyers and for your sellers, explain how it works, show some options. So you are more comfortable with discussing the buy down strategy with all of your clients to get more of your deals closed. Again, this whole webinar series is proprietary to the guaranteed rate family of companies and our Agent Advantage website. If you are not familiar with Agent Advantage, it is our no cost website for all of our realtor referral partners like you. It has technology, it has a loan dashboard for views on all of your loans in progress, and it has a full CRM marketing system that is powered by Total Expert. Agent Advantage is all about helping you look good to your clients, saving time and growing your business. It is agents.rate.com for Agent Advantage. We do have a version for each of our companies. You can always contact your loan officer for more info or email us at agents at rate.com. Also mentioned to our Agent Advantage Insider Facebook page. This is a closed group. It has all of our Agent Advantage news and upcoming webinars with promoting agent excellence content. Closed group, like I said, you can just go to Facebook and search Agent Advantage Insider, or you can just click that QR code on your screen and you can request to join our forum for Agent Advantage Insider. And as a reminder, these webinars, please ask your questions. This is all for you. Drop your questions in the chat. We'll try to answer them live, or we promise we will send replies directly back to you. So let's get rolling. I want to bring on our two presenters today. We have Dave Lopshire, our Senior VP of Sales, and Christy Kovarik. She is on the product side, and they are going to roll through a little presentation on buy downs and how you can take advantage of them. Hello, Dave. Hello, Christy. Hey, Kurt. Hello. Thanks for being here and tell our agents how they can uh, leverage buy downs and, and what they are for maybe an agent who's never done one before. All right. So, you know, we're all dealing with an interesting market right now, right? Notice I didn't say tough or challenging. I think it's interesting. Um, because we have to think about new strategies and we got to find ways to own our market, right? Now, for those of you who are listing agents, think about those listings that you have sitting there right now, right? Some of your sellers really haven't adapted to <laughs> the difference in the market right now. They haven't adapted to this interesting situation we're dealing with. We have buyers out there, right? They have adapted because of interest rates and they're trying to keep their payments from going up too much. So what do they want, right? They want the sellers to drop the price of the home, which is a catch-22. We all know that home sales at lower prices are only going to deflate the market. What, and we're also seeing that on the builder's side. So what we've come up with here at the Guaranteed Rate Companies is an interesting way to think about how you might be able to get rid of that catch-22. So what we think about is how do we help buyers who want lower payments without dramatically dropping the price of the home. And, and this is something that you could use on your existing listings. It's also something that you could incorporate into your listing presentations, the ones that you're gonna make uh, in the future, right? And for those of you who have buyers, 
this is something that you can present as part of your offer. And so as Kurt was talking about, we're talking about a buy down, right? What I really think you should think about is calling it an inflation buster or a rate buster, right? Now, typically in the past, this approach was mainly used with builders. Selling a home at a lower price hurts their comps and affects prices in general. So what we thought about is why don't we do this on everything? Right. So using this approach for all available sales works really well in this transitioning market like we're dealing with now for buyers. It's that lower payment. Right. They're trying to get that lower payment. But at the same time, this strategy allows them to build equity and have a higher cash flow for moving related expenses. And then for sellers, they're going to attract more buyers. And even though they're giving some concession, it's actually a better situation for them in the long run. But what I want to tell you most importantly here, right? I got to do that that uh, um, little proviso. Every situation that you deal with will be different, right? Every scenario, every home price, every buyer, every seller, every one of those will be different. And the only way that you can really figure out what your best strategy is, is to work with your guaranteed rate loan officer and talk with them and have them talk with your buyers, have them talk with, you know, um, the, the approach, looking at how we would approach that. We're going to give you some examples today, but remember, they're just high level examples. Um, we're going to talk about rates, but they don't apply. They're just examples because remember, rates are tied to the, to the uh, buyers, right? So we, and, and every buyer is different. So we have to give you some examples today but make sure that you talk with your guaranteed rate uh, professional VP who's going to be able to talk with you specifically about your strategies with your buyer. And if you want, you can actually incorporate your VP into some of your listing presentations and they can talk about these strategies with your sellers as well. Now, it's important to know that this buy down strategy will work regardless of the loan program or the loan amount, right? If you have a listing that's $100,000 or $10 million, the buy down strategy work. Temporary buy downs are only available on a limited number of products and programs, but pretty much you can do just about any program or product or loan amount on a permanent buy down, which I want to defer now to Christy because Christy is the, the she's the nuts and bolts person, right? I'm the salesperson. I'm going to come up with anything I could do to sell, right? But Christy's going to keep me online to talk about some of the things. And, and what we're doing here is we're talking about, Christy, instead of dropping the price of the home, we're talking about having the seller make a concession and then using that concession to buy down the rate, right? Yeah, that's a great idea. And it's really applicable in this market where there's been a little bit of shock on the consumer's part as to where rates have gone. But when you think about interest rates, um, you kind of refer to it as a stack. So if today's rate is 7%, at zero points, what you can help with as a concession with your seller is if they were to offer to pay 1% of the loan amount, that 1% could buy down the interest rate uh, up to a quarter, maybe three eighths of a point. That makes a big difference in those monthly payments and over the life of the loan uh, for the overall interest that someone would pay. So if they're willing to pay two points, you might be able to get them a half a percent less in rate, maybe five eighths. Um, it's a little different product to product, um, but people forget that we're so used to that par pricing or the premium pricing where you're kind of getting a credit from the lender. Um, we are not in that market anymore. And getting your sellers to offer as a sales concession to cover discount points to get your consumer a lower interest rate, which is a lower payment and saved interest over the life of the loan. All right, now the number one limitation, right, is the allowable seller concessions. And that bar uh, varies based on the program. It uh, varies on the price of the property. Interested party contributions, which they're technically called, right? They're limited to between three to 6% in most situations. And again, speak to your loan officers for specific um, details on any transactions because this is very important. This is a great strategy, but the details really do matter. Okay. So when we're talking about strategies, right, what we can do is we can market this 
has a property that has some special financing, right? You can do that in your social media posts. You can do open houses with your BP. Um, you can do home buyer education sessions. Um, and then when you get somebody that maybe is pre-approved at another mortgage company, right? What you might want to say is, you know, I know that you've been pre-approved, but have you, has your lender discussed the buy-down strategy with you, right? And then when they say no, good. I want you to call my guy, Dave, at uh, the Guaranteed Rate Companies, and we want to talk about, you know, exploring this, right? So what we want to do is we want to make sure that we're going at it at, from the right um, attribute. Because what we don't want to do is we don't want to promote the price reduction. What we want to do is we want to promote um, this different strategy. Because for your sellers, we want to keep those prices up there, right? That helps the market. But we also want to help our buyers coming in that are going to be able to use this strategy um, to come in and actually get that lower payment, right? And they're going to be more willing to, to do that then, you know, saying you have to drop your price by $20,000 when they can pay a lot less than that and help the buyer obtain the same payment, right? Now let's talk about the buyer's agents, right? So for those of you, right, you have your buyers structure your offer prior to submitting it, right? It's really hard to undo the whole thing once the offer's there. So we want to make sure that we get the offer, including this strategy, right, where we work on getting that seller concession in there. So we want to make sure that we suggest the seller conditions to bridge the gap um, and, and do that during the offer process um, instead of after when we're trying to go back and redo it. The reality is, is that after the initial pre-approval issued, um, we got to make sure that we're staying in contact, right? We're staying in, in contact and we're talking about these different strategies that we can do, right? Um, and I think it's really important that we talk with our buyers on what it would be able to do for them. Now, again, I'm going to give you some examples here, but remember, I have to keep saying this, every situation is different, okay? Every situation is different. So if you look at this graphic on your screen, you see that here's my sales price, right? So I'm at a $325,000 sales price. I can ask my buyer, I'm, I'm sorry, my sellers to drop their, their price by $20,000, which they're less likely to do. And if you see that, it only actually equates to the borrower for being a little bit of a reduction in their payment, 128 bucks, right? But look at this. When they actually do the, the seller concession, the seller's only spending about seven grand in reduction and the buyer's actually getting a lower payment, right? So if you look at the price versus rate, they're actually getting a lower payment and the seller is not having to make this big concession on lowering the price, which again, helps our marketplace. And again, I have to just remind you that these are example rates. These are example terms. Every situation is different. Now, and again, Christine, I'll talk about this, right? There's a difference between a permanent and a temporary buy down, right? The permanent is for the life of the loan. The temporary is for um, a few years. So Christy, let's talk about those differences. Help me understand what the differences are. All right. Uh, the temporary buy down, slightly misleading. So what we're doing is we are making them a note rate, let's say at six and a half percent today, but we will lower their payment by actually calculating what that payment would be at two percent or one percent less for a year. We take the difference and that that amount, the difference, the seller actually subsidizes their payment for the first year or two sometimes three years. Um, so they get a more affordable payment. Um, and the difference is a seller becomes a seller concession. So let's say we're doing a two, you'll see all kinds of combinations. Uh, we offer a three, two, one, a two, one, a one, oh, a one, 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 a one and a half and a half. All that just means is for the first year, the seller is going to make up the difference between the rate that we made the loan at, let's say at six and a half, and if we're doing a two one that first year, we're going to figure out what the payment is at four and a half percent. What's the difference to the payment at six and a half percent times 12. And that becomes the first year subsidy. So um, then the second year, that's where the one percent, the two one, the one comes in. So now we're going to calculate what their payment would be at five and a half. 
what their payment is at six and a half and the difference between that five and a half and six and a half becomes again the subs the total subsidy for that year so the borrower is only making a payment their first year for four and a half their second year for five and a half and then the third year and for the rest of the term of the loan would be at six and a half so for that first year and it makes a big difference um, for example, on a $400,000 loan, six and a half percent locked in rate, their payment would be about $2,528, but at four and a half percent, it's only $2,026. So that's a difference of $500 for the first 12 months of that loan. That $500 times 12 is $6,000. That becomes the total subsidy from the seller for the first year. $500 is pretty meaningful for a new buyer just moving into a home to cover all those unexpected things, kind of gives them a little room to grow into their payment. Um, and then the second year on a 2-1, the payment would be at five and a half, about $2,271. So again, at their note rate of six and a half, $2,528, they're only going to pay $2,271. That's a difference of about $257 times 12, that's $3,000. So that's the second year total subsidy from the seller. So you put the first year and the second year together, that comes out to $9,100 total subsidy seller concession on a $400,000 home. That's really a true advantage to the buyer, uh, very attractive. And again, as Dave's been saying, it helps your seller not have to drop his listing price. Yeah, so basically what you're, you're you're doing is you're dropping that price by $20,000, but that's going to cost you a lot of money as the seller. By this way, you, you do it for nine grand, right? So yeah, you're right. spending a little bit of more money, but you're not, you know, you're not going to, you know, have to pay as much. Now, another thing that I want to tell you that this is very important to know, we are seeing some buyers out there, right? And you guys, I know you're experiencing this, who are struggling with higher rates and they're struggling to qualify, right? So with a permanent buy down, I can actually use the lower rate to qualify them, right? So that might help us as well. Now, the other side of that is, is on a temporary buy down, they're gonna save more in that initial, right? Um, but depending on what your buyer situation is, we may have to do the, the permanent buy down. And, and who knows what rates are gonna do over the next year or two or three, right? Who knows, right? What I'm gonna tell you is, is that you know, in a year from now, if rates start to come down a little bit, which we think they are, who knows, right? If, I, if I'd be a millionaire, if I could tell you, right? But if the rates come down, we can actually do a rate and term refinance for them, you know, two years down the road and get them into the lower rate at that time. So there's a, 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 a couple of things that we have to think about. And again, we have to make sure that we are taking every buyer on their own merits. All right. So one of the things that's really important to know as we talk about the difference between permanent and temporary buy downs. Temporary buy downs are limited on property type, right? So you might not have the option to do a temporary buy down. And again, we have to look at every scenario. We have to look at every home. We have to look at every buyer. Some temporary buy downs are not available on some properties. But if I, if it is, right, and it, it becomes an option, you can see by, if I do this comparison on your screen, right? If I look at a 30-year fixed permanent rate at $450,000, right, and I do the 2-1 temporary buy-down to our uh, Christie's point, I can actually drop that payment by 516, right? And that's going to be for the first year or two years or depending on how we structure that because we have a, a, a lot of different ways to do that. But if I do the permanent buy-down, the permanent payment jumps by a little less, but that's pretty substantial. And again, we're talking about the payment's going to be, you know, according to the, the property type and the price of the home. And again, every situation is going to be um, different as we look at the, at, at, the price, at, at the prices of the property. Remember that a buy down is almost, almost always going to generate a lot of savings for the buyer, more than a price reduction in every situation. Now, a seller funded buy down, right? will reduce almost, I'm sorry, result in almost always a higher net proceed for that seller. And again, we have to talk about specifics. We have to talk about, you know, the differences between property types and program types and every buyer is different, all that. But almost always 
the seller is going to recoup more of their cost by making this concession than if they just lower the price. And we all know that we want to keep those prices where that we are because of comps and, and, and making sure that the market stays stable, right? In this scenario, the temporary buy down clearly provides the most monthly savings in the short term. The longer a buyer remains in the loan, the savings will shift from the temporary buy down to the permanent buy down. And as you can see, what we want to do is we want to help that buyer with getting that payment lower. So what do we do? How do we talk about this with our seller, right? The buyer can make the full price offer, right? And then lower their initial payment by this amount, right? And what the seller is going to do is instead of lowering their the price of their home, they're going to agree to provide the amount of the concession, which means you got to bring your VP in, your loan officer in, to talk about the cost. So, Christy, how do we, I know we have a lot of calculators and complex stuff that we do on our side, but what's the general idea for me as a VP to calculate what the buyer is going to have to bring to the table and what the concession amount the seller is going to have to get? For our loan officers, we provide them with calculators, but it's really, if you have, if you as an agent as a, have a P&I calculator, the best way to do it is the old fashioned way of uh, what, what you think the, that your borrower or your consumer is going to get locked in at, uh, like I said, six and a half. And then you figure out what that, if you're doing a two one or a one Oh, what is that payment at the first year? You subtract it from the payment at, at the locked in rate and then whatever that difference is times 12, that's the first year. Uh, and if you're doing something with a long a buy down with a longer term than one year, you know, you do the same thing for the second year and then you total them up. So it, it's very exact. Um, if you're writing offers, um, you know, I would take the time uh, and work with your loan officer to figure out what that amount is. And, you know, you're probably going to write your contract not to exceed or up to, but you want to get as close as possible because that becomes part of the credit decision and part of the evaluation is how much is that seller concession. And you want to make sure that you have enough. Um, because only this, we can only fund that buy down, the temporary buy down from a seller paid or builder paid contribution. Yeah, that's what we want to get into next is the fact that there are a lot of restrictions, right? So say, for instance, the seller says, well, I'm going to only offer $4,000, right? We, the buyer can't make up the difference. The mortgage company can't make up the difference. The only one that can make up the difference is the seller. So if they're not willing to make that full you know, amount as a concession, then the buy down is not an option, right? Because we are very, very regulated on how the buy down could be done because you can't inflate the price, right? You can't right. inflate the price to pay for the buy down. That's absolutely, you know, because we have yeah. to prove a lot of things around that. And again, yeah. I don't want to get too legal here. But yeah, you you're going to sure have enough appraisal. Enough. You'll have a pre, yeah, you'll end up with appraisal issues if you overinflate the value to compensate for the sales concession, and that is why, as you mentioned earlier, Dave, there is a cap on how much the interested party contribution can be to make sure that the seller and the agents aren't overinflating the value to support that concession. Exactly, because this is not a one size fits all program, right? It is not. Um, because we have to customize it to every particular situation. So we have to, you know, make sure that we're talking with this. Uh, that's why your VP needs to be a, very much a part of this discussion, right? They have to make sure that they're pre-approving the, the, your, your buyer, making sure that they're loaded with that pre-approval. And, and our process is amazing, by the way. Um, and what we try to do is, you know, you send us a buyer, we're going to have them pre-approved in a very short amount of time so you can get them out there looking at homes. And then we'll talk about that, you know, that uh, situation. For you, uh, those of you who have listings and you want to talk about this, don't be afraid to bring it up when the, when the uh, um, situation comes and the offer comes in. Don't be afraid to bring it up and talk about, you know, that this, this is a strategy that you've heard about. Um, and then, you know, I'm just going to say it here, introduce them to uh, one of our VPs so we can talk about that strategy. Because what we want to do is we want to help our sellers use this, you know, the funded buy down on their counters instead of lowering the price of the home. Okay, we want to make sure that we're using this as a strategy and we're doing it right. It's a great way for us to maintain um, the market and to be uh, stable and helping our buyers get into these situations and taking advantage of, of the fact that we can use the market and this 
interesting market that we're in to help you sell more homes. Now, there's a couple of things I want to just wrap up with here, right? So um, this is more to think about, you know, for a buyer because, you know, they're putting a, a, a certain amount of money into this, right? So what we have is say, for instance, they're going to refinance the property, right? If there's any unused funds in there, they go to the principal reduction. So they're not losing any money, right? So we want to make sure that people understand is that they're protected because that's our job is protect our buyers, right? Now, the other side of that is, is how is the buy down accounted for in the contract? That's really important for you. You have to add that in as a seller contribution. And again, much, very important that you bring your VP in, your loan officer in to help you structure that when you put your um, offer together. How much can the seller con contribute? And again, it is depending on the property type, depending on the loan amount, there are maximum, as, as Christy just said, we call it an interested party contribution or in our term, it's an IPC, right? We have to make sure that there are, um, we don't uh, go uh, against the maximums and we don't go under the minimums, right? We have to make sure that that is an exact amount on what's allowed. And then the following thing is, is that they say, you know, well, if you're gonna buy down the rate, what rate is on the contract? It's gonna be put in as the rate they are actually paying. And that's what we have to disclose, right? We have to make sure that we're disclosing the actual rate that they're paying, whether it's a temporary buy down or it's a permanent buy down. And then as I said a minute ago, right? If they're not willing to put in the full amount of the subsidy, we can't do anything. The seller credit amount must match the required subsidy amount. We cannot cover any differences there. All right, Christy, what did we miss as far as uh, informing our agents about how they use this as a strategy? I think you, you did a great job, Dave. Uh, you, this is a wonderful tool, whether it's a permanent buy down or a temporary buy down. It really helps the consumer overcome some of that shock factor that's going on right now. It gives you something different to talk to your sellers about instead of just, you know, your house has been on the market for 10 days. Let's drop the price $5,000. I think if you've got a listing out there and you've got seller contribution, that's going to be really attractive to a consumer in this market. So I hope uh, the agents uh, take advantage and reach out to our loan officers and let us work with you. We've got a lot of different buy down types, a lot of different possibilities. We'll find something that fits. All right, so final strategies here. If you're a listing agent, look at all of those listings you have right now, right? And you, the seller is you know, saying, hey, why isn't my property selling, right? I wanna, uh, maybe you need to lower the price. You can take that out of your vernacular. I've got a great strategy now for you to where you don't have to lower your price. It will cost you a little bit, but let me show you how this works, right? And then you bring your VPN, your loan officer, and we have a conversation with all those listings. For those of you who have buyers out that are looking and they're looking at these prices and they're going, oh my gosh, I don't know that I can make those monthly payments. This is a great strategy for you to introduce to your uh, existing buyers. Let's get them pre-approved. Let's get them out there looking for homes and let's in involve that buy down strategy as part of your next offer. And we're always here to help, Kurt, as always. You know, the best thing is, is to sit down and talk with your uh, guaranteed rate company, BP, figure out what the best way we can do for all of those buyers that are out there and how we can help them and how we can help you guys sell more homes. Back to you, sir. Very good. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Christy. Some questions came in. I think both of you covered it lots on how this differs. The, the buy down differs from the permanent buy down and paying the discount points. Uh, very uh, went into that well. And then to answer those asking, yes, you can refi during that buy down period and the remaining funds that, as you said, they will be applied to the principal. So in each case, contact your loan officer for specific scenarios. I want to thank Dave and Christy for helping us and our audience. Great stuff. We appreciate your, your insight and your expertise. Uh, I'd like to also say, look out and please join us for our next Agent Advantage webinar. We do these on the first Wednesday of each month. So be on the lookout, check out the Facebook page for the next upcoming webinar and topic. And also we love your feedback. So contact us if you have any questions at all, we can get them to our presenters, agents at rate.com feedback, 
other topics you might like us to cover in the future, we'd love to hear from you. And on behalf of your guaranteed family of companies and the Agent Advantage team, I'm Kirk Klaus on behalf of Dave and Christy. Thanks again for joining us. Have a great rest of your day.